Okay, precast operations are, like I said, are on this side of the plant. And when you do, when you do precast, a typical thing that happens with the architect, they have their design drawings, they have their, uh, and then a precaster has to make samples. What you're seeing here is different samples that were made for housing panels. This is a thin brick product, and we used it with an integral color, and we used it with a standard gray concrete. When you see a sample board like that, that's giving the architect the different color variations for thin brick panels that he could do. The other stuff that you see is samples of just stains. <clears throat> and let's take a walk this way. Th this plant, you'll notice as we walk over this way, recycles all its water because when we're pouring concrete, we don't need, you know, pure fresh city water. We can use potable water. And what we do is we drain everything and recycle it to our pond out here and reuse it over and over. Concrete and the fines out and it goes from dirty water to clear to clear to clearest. And then it goes right into our pond. We have well water here that we also can use, but we use what's free. And we like to think we're being a little bit of sustainability here in our plant by doing that. What type of machine is that? This is what's called a, a MyJack. A MyJack. It's the manufacturer's name of MyJack. And what it does is it straddles a piece of precast concrete. And on the top of each one of these pieces have the little inserts. And then it clips onto the piece and then lifts it up and carries it and puts it on a truck. Or it'll take it and strip it off the bed. Okay? What's that product? No? Uh, mesh. Wire mesh. Wire mesh is put in the concrete to prevent cracking. Or not prevent, I'm sorry, not prevent it, but minimize it. If you don't have wire mesh in a piece of concrete, what happens is once a crack happens, it'll just keep going and separating. With wire mesh in there, it'll keep it from spreading out even more. They put uh, wire mesh and rebar in all the pieces. How many are from Chicago? How many of you have taken a ride on 294 or 80 or 55? You ever see this stuff? This is called sound wall. This plant has made over four and a half million square feet of sound wall for the state of Illinois. We've made it for Missouri, we've made it for Ohio, but you have to understand when you're talking about concrete, you actually get limited to how far you can deliver because of freight. Each piece has to go on to a truck. Each piece has to be delivered to a job site. And you're, you're limited by the amount of pieces that you can actually put on a truck by weight and by size. What you're looking at here is a two-sided sound wall that's stained on both sides. This piece right here, this, this concrete lip, they call it, goes with inside the uh, steel beams. And then they put, they put shims in here to prevent it from rattling around inside the steel. This is one piece, then they got on the other side, they keep going all the way down the line. Okay? The connection between each piece and the other? No, this will be between a steel beam. Steel beam. It's actually loose in that, in that caisson, in that, two, in that steel beam area. If we look, let's go this way. Obviously, beams are installed first. Correct. And these are the right on the top. Correct. The steel beams are actually, if you ever see a job that has just started, what happens is the steel beam might be up uh, 10 feet in the air. By code, it has to be 80% of the height of the wall in the ground. So your beam is actually 18 feet, but you're only seeing 10. And the reason for that is, so the wall doesn't do this. Let's keep going. Uh, let's stop over here. I wanted to show you one more thing. This is an area over here that we don't like to really talk about because these are mistakes. These are mistakes that cost us money. <clears throat> this particular project right here, this is a housing panel. As you can see, 
It's a thin brick housing panel that has integral color. It's not that gray concrete, it's a, it's a light tan color. And it radiates through all the joints here. A window opening that's cast into the piece. And as you can see, this is the top of the piece over here, and this is the bottom. Whenever you have a precast piece, they'll always cra they'll cast this in there. What's that for? Your windows will go in here. What will this do? Uh, water seal. When water hits this, it'll want to come around here and go, and if you don't have that, it'll go right back into the building. This is called a drip edge. You'll see this on any kind of construction out there. This will be in every type of window and door application. <laughs> this particular piece looks okay, but it's actually three quarters of an inch too narrow. Guy didn't use the right end of the tape, you know. Real quick, measured it out and said, fine, pour it. And then quality control comes in afterwards and says, they measure it and they say, wait a minute, this piece is three quarters of an inch. And this right here is about a $10,000 mistake. <laughs> Do you fire them? <laughs> no. Are these, are these welded to the post? Or yeah, these, these pieces, as you can see, come over here. You have an integral weld plate cast into the piece. This will be down to a concrete foundation that'll have a metal piece right here, and then this will be welded to the foundation. And then, as you go along, a floor angle. This is a floor angle. Your floors will sit on top of this, and then when this piece goes to the next piece, what they do is they weld those angles together. That means this panel is welded to this panel, and you keep going all the way down the line. If you take a look over this way, you can see, you can see the little lifting inserts that are on each piece. Lifting insert doesn't seem like a whole lot, folks, but that one piece down there is rated for 10 tons. That one piece can hold 20,000 pounds of weight. So I got a 40,000 pound capacity with this wall panel. This wall panel probably weighs 27,000 pounds. Why would we do that? Why would we put two in there? You're gonna run into this all the time. It's called a safety factor. Designers, your structural engineers, and your architects will always have a safety factor into the piece in case one fails completely. If they fail, usually they'll just pop. They won't completely rip out. Okay? Now this piece in particular, it's sitting like it will sit on the building? No, or? this is on its side. On its side. So the final... The final thing is this will be up like that. Okay. The lifting inserts are the top of the piece. This is a little invention that we, we came up with when we first started getting into, we do a lot of housing in Chicago and unfortunately the housing market now is gone, but it will come back. And what we did is we designed our own delivery system. Our trailers. Adding glasses. Yeah, it looks like a glass trailer, doesn't it? What we do is we take a panel like that and put it in here this way. The lifting inserts are on top. And what we do is we don't allow our panels any more than 13 feet in height. Why? They'll, you're right. Mathematically, if you put more than 13 feet, they won't fit in this frame. That's good, but there's another reason, a realistic reason. We're delivering to Chicago. Highway bridges. Highway bridges. If you go higher than 14 feet, you won't be able to get underneath these bridges. That's why we put them in trays that are only six inches off the ground. So this panel will actually be 13 foot six. Safety factor, again. 